Stan Tatkin, Wired for Love. How understanding your partner's brain and attachment style can help you defuse conflict and build a secure relationship. Welcome to the intriguing world of Wired for Love, where you will delve into how your brain and attachment style play pivotal roles in forming and maintaining a secure and successful relationship. Through the lens of attachment theory, this summary will assess the impact of early childhood attachment experiences on adult relationships, while emphasizing the importance of cultivating a strong, couple bubble. This essential guide takes a deep dive into the various ways in which childhood insecurities may impact one's relationships, and provides practical advice on overcoming them. So, buckle up and get ready to gain a deeper understanding of the complex interplay between our brains, attachment styles, and relationships. The Impact of Early Childhood Experience on Adult Relationships Our early experiences define our sense of safety and security in adult relationships. Attachment theory suggests that a secure primary attachment as a child leads to a confident and secure couple bubble as an adult. However, not everyone had a secure childhood, and vulnerabilities from childhood tend to resurface and threaten the couple bubble. The key to rewiring these tendencies is by identifying and getting familiar with our insecurities. Ultimately, early experiences have both physiological and psychological effects on our adult relationships. Understanding attachment styles in relationships. Strengthen the bond between you and your partner by comprehending each other's attachment style. This summary highlights the importance of attachment theory and its impact on relationships, providing three types of attachment styles, anchors, islands, and waves. Based on how you were raised and your experiences, you could fall under any of the attachment styles, which can influence your approach to relationships. Understanding your vulnerabilities and your partner's insecurities can improve your communication, help manage conflicts and create a strong bond that goes beyond the initial infatuation. The Primitive Brain and Conflict Our brain's primitive structures are wired for survival, but they can sabotage our relationships. Conflict arises when security-seeking parts are triggered, such as the amygdalae and hypothalamus. These structures react to danger, leading to the fight, flight, or freeze response. Understanding these mechanisms can help us avoid conflict in relationships. Imagine standing on a railway track with a train speeding toward you. In that moment, the only thing your brain cares about is getting you out of danger. This is just one example of how our brains have evolved to prioritize survival above all else. Our ancestors' constant struggle for survival has resulted in brain structures that help us take immediate action in the face of danger. These structures are what the author calls primitives. But while they are great for keeping us alive, they also have the potential to sabotage our relationships. The key message is that conflict occurs when the security-seeking parts of our brain are triggered. The amygdalae, the almond-shaped parts of our brain, scan the environment continuously for signs of danger. When they detect a threat, they trigger the hypothalamus, which offers us three options, fight, flee, or freeze. Our body is now ready to engage in conflict and war becomes all but inevitable. So, what do these primitives look like in the context of a relationship? Consider Leah and Franklin, a couple who have been dating for over a year. Leah is growing frustrated that Franklin hasn't expressed any desire to get married. One evening, they're driving to dinner when a wedding-themed song comes on the radio. The song triggers Leah's amygdalae, and she unknowingly tenses up, lowers the volume, and asks, can we talk? Meanwhile, Franklin's amygdalae alert him to the sudden change in his hypothalamus is activated, and his muscles stiffen up in preparation for a fight. While this conflict situation may be relatable to many, it doesn't have to be that way. Understanding the mechanisms behind these responses can help us avoid conflict in our relationships. Knowing how our brain works, and the effect it has on our thoughts and actions, can help us to regulate our emotions and communicate more effectively. Ultimately, unlocking this knowledge can pave the way for healthier and stronger relationships. Manage conflict by engaging your ambassadors. When faced with conflict, our primitive brains take over, 
making fights stressful. To override this and regain control, engage the more evolved, ambassador parts of the brain responsible for socializing. These ambassadors can be just as powerful as our primitives. To engage them, take deep and slow breaths or relax your muscles. A diplomat wire within us all is the right side of the brain responsible for imagination and reading slash responding to nonverbal cues. To activate it, adjust your tone of voice and acknowledge your partner's cues. By identifying the firing of your primitives, you can make room for the ambassadors to step in and soothe your partner's vulnerabilities and your own, leading to successful relationships. The importance of bedtime and morning rituals for a stronger relationship. Noah and Isabella, a married couple with kids, have been fighting lately. They blame their busy schedules and parenting obligations for their struggles. However, the real issue might be that they don't share bedtime and morning routines. Research shows that couples who don't go to bed together and wake up at different times have more arguments, spend less quality time, and feel less connected. Psychologist Jeffrey Larson's 1991 study of 150 couples found that bedtime and morning routines are essential to maintaining closeness in a relationship. Additionally, psychologist Wendy Troxell's 2010 research highlighted that sleeping with your partner can improve sleep quality and emotional security. To strengthen your relationship, plan activities together before bedtime and wake up together in the morning for at least a week. It could be as simple as watching TV or listening to a podcast, but make sure to hold hands, look at each other, and talk. Closeness is essential for a happy and healthy relationship. The Couple Bubble To find true fulfillment and happiness, the author suggests committing to being available for your partner 24-7 in a healthy couple bubble. The key message is for both partners to agree to be there for each other any time and any place, without prioritizing one's well-being over the other. It's about managing emotions and vulnerabilities while creating a mind-sharing space, staying alert to each other's cues, and developing nonverbal cues to communicate. The couple bubble is a mutual agreement that protects both partners and enhances their creativity and problem-solving skills when they work to maintain it every day. The enlightening journey of Wired for Love has come to an end, but the valuable insights can be applied throughout your relationship journey. By understanding and analyzing attachment styles from early childhood, you can foster a healthy couple bubble and subsequently create a secure, long-lasting relationship. This summary offered practical solutions for recognizing and managing negative emotions, effective communication techniques, and the importance of morning and bedtime rituals. Armed with this powerful knowledge, you can now incorporate these strategies into your everyday life, fostering a thriving, fulfilling relationship for both you and your partner.